Good. Good, good. Chilling. Just waking up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We do. We do. We'll talk about it, man. Obviously, it's been a long layoff, man. It's been a while since we got to see you, and, and now you're back. It's fight week. I know you're probably a little tired, as everybody is, with all the you know the, the late nights here. But, uh, the but adjustments how's it feeling back and, in fight week? Yeah, the adjustments and the fucking cars racing over here all night. It's, it's interesting. The cars make it a little, little tough to sleep. But well, see, we don't get the five star treatment over here. Yeah, I look at Tiki Gossin's, uh Instagram page right now. You'll see what I'm talking about. Nice. Well, outside of those slight headaches, it, does it? I mean, does it feel like, hey man, fight week again? Like back in the mix of everything again? All this right now, I just walked in. I just felt it. Yeah, like everything's been no people, you know. So just kind of virtual interviews and ever and whatever. So it feels kind of like you're just going through the motions, but it doesn't really feel. Too fight weekish, but yeah, I walked in the room. I didn't expect to see all you guys here, so it's uh, it's cool, man. Does it feel exciting? I mean, even though like it didn't feel like really fight week until now, were you getting that kind of the butterflies, or whatever, that feeling of like being close to a fight again? I mean, were you starting to feel that excitement? No, yeah, I feel it. You're sleeping, you're thinking about it, and fucking waking up, throwing uppercuts and shit, like you know, like thinking about the fight and what you're gonna do, and like it's just constantly in your head about. Saturday or Sunday right here, right? But, um, yeah, that's still there. That hasn't left, but the whole media. And, you know, like, the, there's, there's like, a, there's a regular fight stuff, and then there's the other fight stuff that you have to do. So it's, like, that I haven't felt too much of. Right. Um, which is actually kind of, like, a good thing for me. It just kind of lets me focus still more on what, I, what the task that's ahead of me. And, um, yeah. I know so much of this time away has been about reinvention, right? Like things around you, within yourself, all those yeah. things. I mean, it sounds like it's been a lot. I mean, but if there was like one biggest thing or one key thing, is there something you can point to and say, man, this was the most important? I think I just feel free now, man. Yeah, for me, I feel free. Uh, before, I didn't feel free. Um, now, with everything that's happened, I feel free, I feel happy. And uh, for me, ultimately, that's why I joined this, because that's what MMA made me feel like. When I fight, I used to fight for free, you know, like 50 bucks, 100 bucks, like, but I loved it. You know, when I would go in there, I would feel this way. And then somewhere along the lines, I lost it. And then now I got it back. So for me, I'm already, that was a big victory for me, you know, to, to look at my team and say, I'm fucking happy with what we're doing, with how we're living, with how we're reacting with each other. Um, and that for me already is like, yeah, I'm free again. Was it freedom of, of, of losing or freedom of like not feeling like you had to live up to somebody else's expectations of who you were all, to all be? of it, man, all of it. The freedom of losing, the, like you name it, like pressures and all that was there. And then to top it off, some other things that I'll probably never talk about till maybe way later in my life, uh, that happened, um, all, everything, man, everything. So you get everything going in the right direction, and then all of a sudden we find out days before you get here, like Henry's not going to be around. Um, I thought his message was pretty strong, but how did that affect you? Were you like, what the hell is going on hey. here, man? He called me like, uh, like at 9 something in the morning, and I sleep in. So I was like, he's like, hey, man, like, test positive, I can't go. I'm like, yo, stop fucking with me, bro. Like, too early for this shit. Because, you know, we're in the hotel, we're all joking with each other, right? He's like, bro, would I wake you up and call you? I was like, are you serious or are you still joking? I was like, because I'm about to fall for this shit. And, uh, yeah, he was serious. I guess uh, he had it during training camp. And then um, he did his two weeks quarantine and everything. He wasn't, like, he wasn't sick, sick, right, where he was bad. Retested, did like, uh, cause I guess there's all these kind of tests you can take, right? I guess the most accurate one is the PCR test. So he took a couple PCR tests and he came out negative. I was like, all right, cool, we can train again. Started training again, and then uh, life was good. Then we get here, or we got to Vegas for the quarantine, and he did his first test. And uh, yeah, I got the call. It was like, yo, I'm negative this and that, or I'm positive, and I was like, oh, fuck, like, what does that mean? I was like, well, you don't have it, dude, like, tell him take another one. It's like, maybe, like, it just had a bad read or something, you know, like, they have the false positives and 
all that. So I was thinking, maybe you got a false positive, dude. Like, get another one. If it's negative, then you're negative. He's like, yeah, I, I told him about that, but he said, if I fly here to Abu Dhabi and the test here in Abu Dhabi test positive, he has to be locked up somewhere in here for two weeks. Right. And I felt what it was locked up being here for two days. So I can't picture being locked up here for two weeks. Like, I can do it, but I don't, wouldn't want, I'd probably, I'd sneak out the room or something. Yeah. Well, do you buy into what Henner said? I mean, he seemed like a strong message where he said, look, man, I, obviously I'd love to be in the corner, but the one thing that you definitely don't need is help in your jujitsu. I mean, yeah. do, you, do you buy that? Yeah. He knows it. I know it. Uh, when, when he's with me, it's more because you're, we started together, you know, when I was 13 years old. That's it. Sometimes he doesn't even need to talk. As long as you're there, I'm like, I just feel, it feels good to have a homie there, right? right. So you're like, bro, out of, out of this sport that I've done, I've known you the longest. So it just feels good to have a homie on the journey with you, right? But now it's like, all right, let's get to work. We're still working. Uh, maybe it'll make me better, you know? Who knows? This fight, obviously, everybody's excited about it, man. It's, there's been a journey to get here. Yeah. Um, is it a grudge match for you? I mean, we know kind of what the history was and how it played out. Is this a, you know, kind of a, a, an emotional grudge match for you? No, man, not at all. Not at all. Um, I could see how it can be seen that way by my actions. But uh, it was, I think ultimately it was like, yo, we're talking too much. And... Uh, I'm starting to get pissed. And then now little people are chiming in and shit. So it's like, if you really want to go to war with me, this is the beginning. Like, I can get petty as fuck. Uh, I don't want to. It's unprofessional, right? As I'm sure all you guys know. I don't have to tell you. I should know, but it's not the worst case that's happened in the UFC. No. Yeah, so. <laughs> So yeah, but I think it was very clear, kind of like, yo, let's, let's stop this shit and let's just do what we started with, which was we started with a good, um, good start. The whole world had the eyes on us and we didn't have to be the shit talkers or nothing. And then somehow along the way, he decided to go back to it. So I was like, all right, man, like. It's still yeah. a big fight, like you said, without any trash talk. Yeah, you, man. Like you have, all, you have great finishes. You're on a streak. I have great finishes. I'm gonna come back. I'm hungry. This fight sells itself. Your style, my style, the way we collide. Uh, you know, Abu Dhabi. I hope has good hospitals because we're both gonna be in that shit by the end of the night. Um, but yeah, man. It's like uh, there's no need trash talk or not. You know, like I have nothing but bad intentions for him when I, when we both get in there. You know, this this journey has been about you kind of returning and getting back and, and getting the passion again, that sort of thing. So knowing that, when you get in there, are you are you thinking about rankings, where this puts me, does this give me another title shot? I mean, are you thinking about those things, or is this more just about you getting back to you and your passion and your journey? Um, this was all about just kind of coming back, taking a fight that's not easy, right? Because everyone knows something like this happens, they're like, oh, let's rebuild them again or do something. I was like, I don't need rebuilding in the fight world, I need rebuilding in the training world. I got my rebuilding in the training world. I go in the fight world, I, I'm in this sport to fight the best. That's, what I, that's why I love this shit, because it's like, yo, let's test your will against mine, let's test your chest pieces against mine, let's go to war, and ultimately the fans win, everyone wins, but for me, that, 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 that's like a, I don't know why, like, I. Fighters could tell you, but we love that shit, you know? We love going in there, you know? Like, we love testing our will against each other. We love fighting, and we get paid for it, you know? So it's like, this is beautiful. Last thing for so me, man, for me, bro. that's what it was. I will say last thing for me, man. I mean, obviously, your last one out was, was an absolute epic war, but you've had some, you know, dominating it, it was a banger, well, man, so. yeah. So what, what are we going to see? I mean, when you play this one out, I mean... I, I can't imagine you want to put your body through that again, but it sure was one hell of a night. So what's, what, what do you want to do? Do you want to go out there and have another kind of epic performance like that, or do you feel like you know, want to go and dominate somebody? Bro, I will take whatever I can get, obviously. 
if I get a quick knockout, if I get a submission, the name of the game is to win. Um, obviously, you can tell I'm emotional, right? So it might go to a war. I might piss my team off. Uh, but fuck it. Brian, you mentioned that the car's going around and your sleep schedule of sleeps, but something fighters keep talking about here in Abu Dhabi. Is that something that genuinely concerns you? No, they started later at night. I was just joking a little bit. Yeah, they, they, they're like started at 11 or something at night. I'm awake by that time. Uh, but yeah. Do you, have, do you regret the incident with the slap and stuff like that? Do I regret it? Yeah. What slap? Not <laughs> <laughs> to Jay Park. I don't know who got slapped. We, uh, we were in here earlier with, with um, Zombie and he was saying that, you know, personally he might not have a whole lot of respect for you, but as a fighter he thinks, he, he said he was amazed by some of the things you've achieved. Is that a mutual feeling? Um, yeah, I guess you can say that. Yeah. There's some certain things I still can't answer. <laughs> oh, I Got a one year case still open. <laughs> I think if you can't answer, you're not meant to mention that as well. <laughs> when we spoke with uh, Mako Americani before his fight, he was also going through some things, and he said he had to burn a lot of bridges so he could fall back in love with fighting. Is that something you had to do too? Yeah, man. Uh, I had to, had to burn a couple of solid relationships that I thought were solid. Um, hire new people and then get back on there, right? And then so it was like the whole process of everything, of everyone. Like, yo, you meet this guy, you meet this guy, this guy meet this guy, this guy meet this guy. Cool, we all sit down, we all talk. It's like, then we have to just from here move on and build and grow. Um, yeah, man, it was it was interesting ride. And then he, he had mentioned there was a very specific moment where he was looking in the mirror and he kind of realized everything around him needed to change. Was there a specific moment you remember where that all hit you? Yeah. Yeah. In the elevator when I was uh, getting taken into the hospital after I fought Max. That's when I realized right after this, I'm done. I was like, this is it. I go, when, when, when I come back, I go, all these people are gone. And then when Zombie and his coach were in here, he said everyone keeps asking about your grappling versus his grappling this and that, but no one's talking about the striking, and he thinks that's much more interesting to talk about. Do you agree with uh, that assessment? I mean, the fight's going to start standing up, dude. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it makes a point. His striking's good. My striking's good. He likes to bang in a technical way. I like to just fucking bang. Um, obviously, I've been trying to get better, right? So my goal is here to come and show you guys and, uh, and do that. And as far as for the ground, I mean, yeah, it's not a jiu-jitsu tournament. If it was, I'd fucking eat him alive. But yeah.